weight for like a rear delt fly um, that we're going to do and then a heavyish weight that will be um, a lateral squat that we'll be holding it in like a goblet type position. Uh, otherwise, um, the any of the other movements like weight is optional, body weight will be what our um, focus is. And uh, I'll kind of um, let you know, but unmute yourself if you're like, is this, you know, for my quad or the back of my leg or a lot of it is focused on getting space back here so we get full length um, of the glutes. I see lots of people doing glute exercises, but their back glutes are like clenched. They're not getting any length in those tissues. So no matter how much strength work you do, you're not going to get a booty. You're going to end up with still a flat butt. <laughs> So we got to get length and get the the um, femur back in the hip joint, which also resolves a lot of any deep hip rotator tightness or piriformis tightness um, when we can shift into that hip and get the femur to move back. And it's not a big movement like you'll see on me today. It's it's like, you know, max an inch, not not a big movement, but it makes a big difference. Okay, so we're going to start uh, with some breathing in a, in a bear position. So grab your blanket. A yoga block uh, works too, um, but a yoga block might be uh, pretty big for a lot of us. So you can just fold up your blanket and it's going to go under one knee. Other knee is on the floor, on our hands, okay? And then we're gonna push ourselves over to that side that's on the, the blanket, okay? So that kind of forces that femur back into that hip socket, which might have your other knee actually get light on the floor, okay? But we wanna keep like 90 degrees here and we don't wanna go outside. So when you look down, at that leg, the top of the hip is right over top of that knee. There's a high probability that your other knee will get lighter on the floor, okay? Then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna inhale and then exhale and reach that knee towards the floor. without shifting the weight off this leg. For a lot of us, we should start to feel a bit of a stretch here. Then you're gonna inhale, and exhale again, reach that knee towards the floor. Keep that weight over that leg. Now if you want, you can inhale and open up that other leg. That'll ask this side to contract, but watch that you don't shift out past the knee, that it's a glute engagement. So if anything, think about reaching that knee into the, into the blanket as you inhale, and then as you exhale, slide that knee back towards the floor. Inhale, lift, exhale, reach that knee towards the floor. So as we inhale, the knee reaches into the blanket. As we exhale, we reach the knee to the floor. Okay, three more breaths like that. Good, that's it, Karen. To Dan. Yeah. That's it, Karen. Good check. Okay, let that go. Come on, just onto both knees for a second and feel your left and right sides. Okay, inhale in and exhale. And then we're gonna slide that blanket over to the other side. So by the end of those five to 10 breaths, you probably found that the knee could get 
closer and closer to the ground and there was maybe less resistance on that leg that we were shifted into. Okay, so now we're gonna push ourselves onto that blanket side leg. Again, don't, don't drop that hip out, just shift over that knee. Your other knee might get lighter on the floor. Take an inhale, exhale, slide the knees past each other, reach that knee into the floor. Inhale, reach the knee into the blanket. You might open up that other knee. Might take the foot right off the floor. Exhale, think about sliding the knees past one another, bringing that knee towards the floor. Inhale, open up, reach the knee into the blanket. Exhale, reach the knee to the floor. You might start to feel the adductor on that blanket side leg. Okay, after your next exhale, let that go. We're gonna come up to standing. Okay, so we're going to take a block in between our thighs and we're going to come down to kind of just above or around a 90 degree squat. Um, hold on to something so you're not, so that when you shift back that your spine can stay long and it isn't a shift of the butt back and up okay so that you can sit back and down so you could hold on to doorknobs on either side of a door you could hold on to a chair but that you can shift back because you've got this reach kind of forward once we're down here it's not going to be a big movement think of the movement we just did on the blanket as you exhale you're going to reach one knee forward and pull one knee back. When I look down at my knees, it's like a centimeter and a half kind of difference between my knees. What I don't want to do is I don't want to exhale and pull so far back that my whole spine is rotating or twisting. I just want to draw femur back into that hip socket again so that I might feel kind of stretchy stuff down here inhale knees together exhale draw back that other knee inhale center might be a sense of kind of pulling the knee or pulling back like pulling that foot back on the floor exhale pull back inhale together I'm gonna do eight to ten each side Probably feeling warmth in the quads and again this sense of stretch back here. If not, really reach forward or like I said, hold onto that door handle. Let your knees come forward a little bit. Okay, and then as you exhale, you're gonna reach one knee. Inhale, knees together. That knee that is going back, you'll probably feel that adductor engage. That's a good thing. We want that. Pelvis is quiet, spine is quiet. Just drawing that femur back into the socket. Okay, press and come up. Shake those legs out. Did we feel that stretch sense back here? Yeah, okay, awesome. Yeah, fabulous. Okay, so it's great for releasing tension that rear pelvic floor, or if we've got like sensitive tailbones, we've got extra tension back there in the deep rotators, okay? Okay, one more 
breathing kind of drill. Um, you don't need anything for this. So you're gonna take the legs wide, okay? Staying with this theme of improving our hip shift, opening up those back glutes. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna turn sideways, is I'm gonna push myself over onto a leg. My hands kind of reach on either side of that foot, keeping the chest up. Okay, so I go down with my leg to the degree that I can stay long through the spine and chest up. I'm gonna inhale here. Nice stretch through that booty. Exhale, press up. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, drop into that hip. Exhale. Three more. Really get the weight out of that other leg. So again, like once I'm over here, I could theoretically lift this leg up. And I, didn't and I don't have to shift anymore over this leg. Get all of you over, commit. Last one. Okay, so working eccentric load, concept load in the adductors, working eccentric, concentric load in the quads, opening up that butt again. Okay, shouldn't have felt anything through that low back. If we did, then we went too low in that um, sitting in the hip, we went beyond what the hip could kind of open for, and then we extended our low back, okay? So we're gonna do it on the other side, so watch for, um, if anything, kind of think of uh, like a long tail. Don't let it flick up to the ceiling, okay? So we're gonna go to that other side. Shift over, commit, commit, commit. Exhale, knee up. Chest up. Do it about eight to ten or whenever you want to be done. Okay, that's my last one. So we'll do one more round of those. Oh, I lied, Karen. Well, no, you can use a chair. So you can use a wall or you can use a chair for this next one. And then you need a um, medium-ish, probably heavier weight, because when we're laying down, we're gonna be doing a pullover. Okay, so whatever weight you think you're gonna need, supine for a pullover that you your shoulder can control that range for eight to ten. So we're coming down onto our back. Feet on the wall or heels on a chair. Okay. Finding this kind of 90-90 position. And then we're gonna pull both heels down just so that we feel the lower glutes kind of lift and clear the floor. Uh, put your weight in a hand first, okay? Then you're gonna extend up one leg and reach that heel to the wall. So as you do that, it might be further from the wall or closer to the wall. As you lower that heel to the wall, you'll feel the foot on the wall, that hamstring like Whew, kick on real good. Watch that you don't drop the opposite side of the pelvis, okay? You're gonna inhale, reach that arm over, exhale, pull it back. Watch that the ribs stay down, 
Let the spine stays in the position that it's in. Inhale over, exhale up. Inhale over, exhale up. Going for about six to 10 with the weight that you've got. Hamstring is like, hello, 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 hello. Okay, switch sides. Okay, pull down. Once you get that pull down, you're gonna lift up, reach that heel to the wall. Inhale overhead. Exhale. Think about, I failed on the other side. Before you reach overhead, make sure you kind of punch towards the ceiling a little bit. So we pro protract that shoulder blade. Don't think of, don't have the shoulders pinned back and down the shoulder blades. Again, six to 10. This hamstring's way stronger for me. Ah, let it go. Okay, so we're gonna cycle through both of those again. One more time. So again, with the lunge reach about 10 times uh, each side, and then with the pullover, um, hamstring pull down the wall, six to 10. Um, I'm just gonna check in. Did anyone have questions about either of those before we go through them again? Just unmute yourself if you do, otherwise. Just give me a thumbs up and we'll roll right in to going through them again. Okay, awesome, 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 awesome. Okay, so remember on that lateral lunge, inhale, sit back, keep the chest up, tail long, sit back into that hip, inhale here, exhale up. You could reach overhead, At some point when you redo this class, you could add dumbbells or add dumbbell in the hands. If you wanna to start to progressively load this movement. Okay, so 10 and then you're gonna switch sides. You guys look great. Totally unweight that other side. Fall onto this leg. Let it catch you. That'll get some eccentric load. Teach that back hip stuff how to decelerate us. This leg pushes off pushes off to get us back over. Once you've done 10, I'm done. We're going down to the floor for those hand pulls, overhead pullovers. Okay. So feet on that wall. Let's take a couple of breaths here. Let yourself really find the floor. Okay, now you're gonna pull down that wall without actually moving the feet so that we get a little back of the leg stuff happening. And then we're gonna reach up one leg. However close it reaches to the wall, you're gonna drive more isometric work through the back of that opposite leg. Punch towards the ceiling, 
Inhale over, exhale back up. The elbow can bend to get that weight to the floor. That'll change up that lever length. Okay, but whatever bend you have in the elbow, try to keep it throughout. Depending on your weight, six to 10. Should be driving a really nice engagement of those low abs here, just by the movement and breathing. Whee, switch sides. Find that pull. Contract that shoulder blade. Six to ten. Whew. Let that go. Before you get up off the floor, just take a second here, take a few breaths. Let the breath stretch you out into the floor. Let the exhale sink you into the floor. Okay, I'm coming over. So I'm kind of trying to pair something that is like drive stability, like we just did on the floor. We're on the ground, uh, you know, one kind of moving joint with then something more complex. So often we do like an hour class and everything is like multi-joint <laughs> and and our system just kind of gets driven into like overcoming, 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 concentrically biased, concentrically biased. And we just get tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. <laughs> okay, so hopefully at the end of this, you're gonna feel like your muscles worked. But there shouldn't be this sense of tightness. Okay, there'll be this sense of uh, ability to kind of use stiffness better overall. Okay, which stiffness isn't a bad thing. We, we need it to be explosive. Okay, see you. Uh, okay, so this is our multi-joint. This is where you're gonna need your chair. There's options here, okay? So if the chair is, you could use a step as well. So the chair is a pretty big ask. If you don't already have length, enough length through these glutes, then when you go up here, there's going to be some compensation that happens in order to get you up. Okay. So the chair might be too high. So you might want to do a couple of blocks, right? Kind of gauge it. Do the first couple and see how things are feeling. Maybe you want to do two blocks. That's a good height, okay? So this is the, the movement. We're going to start in a lunge. Leg back, leg forward. The opposite hand to that back leg is reaching forward okay so we're right here so now to feel like we shift back into that front hip a little bit that foot that's on the floor I want you to think about trying to pull it forward and under you and that should have you feel like that front heel kind of pulls back and the femur settles into that hip socket yeah give me a thumbs up You'll feel the back of this leg kind of engage a little bit more. You'll feel the front of this other side. Okay, so for some, it might be this isometric. Inhaling here. 
Opposite hand reaching, then we step up and up. Opposite hands going that whole time. Up, up, deep, deep. So take your time. It's on the way down also from this up where we need length or we're gonna get it somewhere else, like through our lumbar. So you shouldn't feel your back at all. If you do, go to a lower up step. Okay? Eight to 10. Could be that you just found the isometric and you step forward here. And then you find this isometric and then you step forward here, okay? Could be here, just getting this coordination of that arm swing, isometric, step through. Or you can do the three lunges. Heap, heap, down, down. Teaching us we can go forward and back. We can go up and down. Okay? Sounds silly, but our bodies forget. Our brains kind of get us in a preferred direction to mitigate gravity. Okay, once you've done 10 on the one side, you're gonna to go to the other. I just wanna check in with those in class. Also gets the heart rate up. Um, does that make sense? Did you find a level that worked for you? If your brain is having a hard time with the going back, something that can be helpful is, like I have a TRX, but you could use just a yoga strap over the door so that again, you have this sense of being able to like, I'm not gonna fall on my arse. So you can trust going back, okay? All of you going back, does that make sense? Okay, so you're gonna do 10. That other side. You don't have to go super fast. Again, balance on the side is like tricky for me today. So I'm gonna do that isometric, really get this hip shifting back a couple of times. Find a spot on the wall in front of you to kind of gaze and hold your focus. on the blanket. Other hand, it's a fist, 
or come up onto a block. Okay, so you decide fist or up onto the block. We're gonna shift over onto that side. That other knee doesn't need to be on the floor. Okay, so if the height of your object, when you shift over, has that other knee get light, that's perfectly fine, okay? It can, if you have the length though, based on the height, it can gently rest on the floor, okay? Then we're gonna take that weight in our hand, okay? And it's a um, inhale, or sorry, exhale, inhale. Exhale, stay shifted onto that hip. This should drive some nice co-contraction through that same side that you're shifted to, ab wall, just organically, okay? We're gonna do six to 10. Soft bend in the elbow, shoulder blade slides towards the spine. Stay pressing through that hand or fist. Good. And then we're gonna switch sides, okay? So shift yourself over. Exhale over onto that hip, take an inhale here. Exhale it up. Watch that you're not sinking at the chest. Watch as you come down that you don't shift your weight to that other side. Okay, 10, and then you're gonna let that go. Okay, back to our lunge ups. I just wanna check in with you guys, having gone through those. Any questions, is that making sense? Do you need alternatives for anything? Um, if, if you aren't feeling much of a stretch back here in that bear, something you can play with is taking the foot towards the side you're pushing away from. Some of us need to, to tension the lateral hip stuff a little bit so that when we shift over as yogis, we can kind of find those fibers. Okay, so if you're, now, you know, now that we did bear twice in breathing at the beginning, we've done some hip shifting, it's like, oh, I can't really feel those lower butt external rotators, add a little bit of external rotation in that leg this next time when we go. Or you could get a higher prop, but I find the rotation does the job a little bit better. Okay, so finding your starting lunge here, opposite arm reach, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, Inhale. Or however you breathe. Again, if you're feeling balanced is an issue, you're like, I'm not really trusting, stepping back and not looking where I'm going, try the isometric hold to the knee up. Once you've done 10, switch sides. So again, the isometric hold is simply that back leg trying to pull forward. So we feel ourselves shift back into that hip, okay? Opposite arm reach, and then you're gonna push to that leg to knee up. It's really hard to go back if our femur can't go back, okay? We get kind of perpetually going forward, so then it feels like, ah, I don't trust going back. 
So we need to create some back space, which will make us more powerful going forward and give us the option of also going backward. So once you've done 10 on the one side, 10 on the other side. When you step up, watch that you don't lift yourself up with the sternum. Drive yourself up with the leg. If you need to put the hands on that leg, I'd rather you did that and used that strategy than lifting up here to get up, okay? Okay, once you've done your 10 or thereabouts, we'll shift to bear with rear delt raise. So I'll put my butt towards you guys this time, just so you can see that it's not a huge movement and it's a movement of the leg into the pelvis and not a movement of the pelvis and spine, okay? So whatever knee that blanket or block is under, check that that hip is at 90. Weight's gonna be on that same side. You're gonna have a block or be up on your fist on that other side, and you're gonna shift yourself over. Just to the point where that um, it's a plumb line on the outside of that leg. Again, you could kickstand in that leg. If that helps you kind of feel this outer hip stuff a little bit more clearly. Stay shifted over onto that side. Exhale, inhale. That'll drive great lower abs on both sides, but you'll feel internal obliques on that other side kick in. Okay? So your gaze will be offset over a little bit to the side that you've shifted towards as well. Your gaze won't be center. Okay, I won't make you look at my butt for the other side. Once you've done six to 10, find that weight shift over to that other side. Keep that weight shift okay once you've done six to ten let that go so part of the reason rear delt with that weight shift is hopefully you could feel how that weight shift drives really great expansion of that side you shifted to. So now we've set a great base of support, the rib cage expanding posteriorly for that shoulder blade to move on. So those of us that are kind of like, have a hard time feeling the blade, this is a great strategy to give that blade some just inherent awareness, a, a better ability of the leg tension relationship to like track retraction and protraction, okay? Rather than staying centered and then lifting here. Just feel it, don't shift your weight and try a, a rear delt raise and feel the difference. So you can feel it clearly for yourself. Those of us that like have any neck issues, are probably gonna feel the difference right away. <laughs> yeah? Does that make sense? Take the breather. Ask a question if you've got it. <laughs> we'll move on to our last set of exercises. 
Okay, grab a drink of water. Okay, our last, okay, our last set of exercises, we've got two options. So, um, show of hands if you would rather, I'll show you them both and then, and then, uh, and then you guys can tell me which one you want to do. So option one, and it's just one compound exercise that we're finishing with. So we'll do two sets of a compound exercise um, with a breathing drill in between our sets. So option one is um, a push up. So we'll inhale, hold the breath in. Again, because that gives us nice expansion um, and a length tension relationship where those shoulder blades have a way easier time staying protracted until the last second. And then the toes are gonna tuck under and we're gonna push back, keep the knees low, okay? Then we come forward, inhale here, hold down, hold up, exhale. Okay, so 10 of those as slow or as fast as you want is option one. Option two is a goblet squat. Uh, so narrow stance, weights up here, okay? What it's gonna look like is we're gonna start with a, a deadlift kind of position. Weight is in that front leg. And then we lower the hips, quad dominant single leg squat. It's that front leg that pushes the hips up and then we unhinge. So it's deadlift, single leg squat, single leg squat, deadlift. Weight is shifted to that front leg. Okay, you guys can pick which one you want to do. <laughs> if you want more legs, go with the last one. If you want more uh, upper body, both are going to keep us opening and eccentrically loading that glute. If you're doing the push up, inhale at the top, hold the inhale, lower, push up, then exhale and push yourself back. Knees stay as close to the ground as you can when you push back. If you're doing this guy, it's pretty straightforward in terms of breath. Okay, you just have weight on that front leg. If that leg's too far back, you won't, you'll be kind of split between the two. So keep it in nice and tight. Deadlift, pin, squat down, squat up, unhinge. Hinge, squat, squat, hinge. This is great if you um, are a yogi and you've, Diane, this would be great for you, this option, where you've got a lot of length through the hamstring and you wanna start to strengthen the, the hamstring and get better kind of balance between the front and the back of the thigh stuff, okay? So 10, each side for this one or 10 with the push-ups. Hinge, squat. Deadlift, you'll feel your heel, you'll feel your heel, you'll feel your heel, you'll shift to your toe. Heel, 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 toe. Let the knee come forward if you're doing that um, deadlift squat pattern. Relax the toes. Mine want to grip on this.
after that set, we're gonna do our breathing. Breathing is, we're gonna take that blanket, or towel, you're gonna roll it. So you've got a tube. Uh, you could do this with your yoga mat also. And then you're gonna create this little shape, place it down, and we're gonna lay with our front rib cage and side ribs on that roll, out prone. Okay, hands on the floor in front, a little bit of reach through the elbows, okay? You're gonna take one knee out to the side, turn your head to that elbow, five breaths here in and out. Okay, then you're gonna switch sides. Knee doesn't need to come super out to the side, just a little bit. Look at that elbow. Reach those elbows into the floor a little bit. Feel that front chest wall on that side you're turned towards. Fill as you inhale, back. Chest wall on the up opposite side, fill. Those are set up this way. Five breaths. Okay. You can stay breathing if you want, or you're gonna finish up one more set, however many you want of either your push up, push back, or your squat, deadlift squat pattern. Okay. Try for five to 10 reps of whatever you're going to finish with or stay breathing but we're going to do one more round of breathing after this set okay this leg. Come on. To come up out of that deadlift, think hip forward rather than knee back. Okay, once you finish that set, back to our breathing here. So pick side you want to take that knee out to, turn the gaze to that elbow, a little bit of a kind of press into the ground with the elbows and away from the chest with the elbows as well as the hands. Slow the inhale and the exhale down, five breaths on this side. Slowly inhale down. Okay. 
Once you've done five, switch sides. And make your way onto your back. Knees bent, feet on the floor. I'm gonna stretch out one leg long. Bring that other knee and you can clasp behind the thigh or hold onto the sides of the pants. Just let the heel drop down. You could hold below the knee as well if this is okay on your knee in terms of the amount of flexion. Um, I want you to think each exhale of like standing tall in that outstretched leg and then letting gravity just accordion fold this other leg into the chest. If you want, you can take it out to the side. You can take it across the body. Okay, bring that knee back to center. We're gonna switch sides, so outstretch that other leg. Bring that knee into the chest, either holding behind the thigh or below on the shin. Inhale, think long through that standing leg. Stretch out long through the torso, the crown of the head. Get as tall as you can on that mat. Exhale, just let gravity help accordion fold that other leg into the chest. You can take a couple breaths here. You take the knee out to the side. You can take it across the chest. I like to reach down to that other ankle and drive a little bit of uh, internal rotation. And then Stretch, leg out long, bring the hands up by the shoulders, inhale here, exhale, slide one arm up, again, stretch out, press the heel of that hand away, stay heavy, 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 heavy through those ribs, inhale that back to the shoulder, exhale, press up, lengthen through that other side. Okay, then we're going to finish with just two lower body rolls to each side. So keeping one leg long, you're going to bring the other knee up. Arms are um, out to the side, kind of in a narrow like X, your arms, rather than right out at shoulder height. You're going to take that knee across the chest, let the pelvis follow when the knee reaches the floor, just let it slide, roll you onto your belly. Take an inhale and an exhale on your belly here. And you're gonna shift back onto your back. Roll to the other side, lift that knee up. It's gonna come across, let the pelvis go. Let the torso be heavy and it just kind of lingers as it rolls over as well. Take a breath here on your belly. Make your way onto your back. I'm going to do that one more time to each side.
Big inhale and an exhale in your belly. And then either roll onto your back or use your arms, press yourself up onto your hands and knees. Make your way up to standing. Kind of feel your feet on the ground. So you can feel a little weight on the inside of the heels. Come down to the big toes. You can also feel the outer pinky, the outer border of the foot. You might inhale up those arms, palms find one another, exhale down. Just to the left of the breastbone, let your gaze fall on the fingertips. Breathe in, just in awe, maybe, maybe, or of okayness of this body, this breath, in this moment. Om Shanti Shanti, peace.